So we're continuing on with our uh, discussion of Vaishnavism, uh, the history, the historical development of Vaishnavism. And we came to a section about the development of Vaishnavism. We've covered uh, a little bit after the part period of Ramanuja, but now we're going to the second period after Ramanuja, development of Vaishnavism during the period of Vedanta Deshika and Pillai Lakacharya. So let's go straight to the text. Okay, so um, development of Vaishnavism during the period of Vedanta Deshika and Pilalagacharya. The second and more significant development of Vaishnavism in the post Ramanuja period comes from Vedanta Deshika, also known as Venkaranatha. Um, 1268 to 1369 is his CE. These are his traditional dates. Um, so traditionally 101 years, year life. And a, an illustrious successor to Ramanuja. In fact, his advent marks an outstanding milestone in the history of both um, the Vishishta Dvaita Vedanta and Vaishnava theology. He was an intellectual giant and as a distinguished scholar of all branches of traditional learning, Sarva Tantra Swatantra. Uh, and the footnote says, this is a title conferred upon him in recognition of his mastery over all branches of learning. He wrote more than a hundred works covering practically all aspects of the vicious debate of philosophy and religion. He wrote both in Sanskrit and also in the Manipavala language, which had become popular in his time. Manipavala is a, a mixture of Sanskrit and Tamil. The philosophical works written in Sanskrit are Tattva Mukta Kalapa, with his own commentary on it known as Sarvarta Siddhi, Adhikarna Sharavali, Nyaya Siddhanjana, Nyaya Parishuddhi, Shatadushani, uh, Tattvatika, an incomplete commentary on Srivasya. Tattpariya Chandrika, which is his uh, glossary on, on, on Gita Basya. Mimamsa Paduka, Sheshvara Mimamsa, Isopanishad Basya. Gajatraya Basya, commentary on the three gadgets of Ramanuja. Stotra Ratna Basya, uh, which is, of course, a commentary on the Stotra Ratna by Alavandar Yudhinacharya. Chattasloki Basya, commentary on two of uh, Yamunacharya's or Alavandar's lyrics. And Gitarta Sangraha Raksha, which is a commentary on Yamuna's work uh, on the Gita, Yamuna's work being Gitarta Sangraha. So his Vedanta Deshika's sub commentary on that is Gitarta Sangraha Raksha. So if anybody's interested in that Gitarta Sangraha Raksha, they can look at our playlist on the, on the YouTube video, on the YouTube uh, channel. Uh, you can look for up Gita Arta Sangraha, and we have lectures by Dr. Arti and Narayana explaining the Gita Arta Sangraha Raksha of Vedanta Deshika. Through these works, he strengthened the Vishishta Dreda philosophy on a solid ground, on solid ground. The Rahasya Triasara and 33 other uh, Rahasya Granthas, see uh, VKSN Raghavan, History of Vishishta Dreda Literature, page 33 to 44, uh, written in Manipavala language, strengthened the theological and esoteric doctrines of Sri Vaishnavism. So these are his Rahasya Granthas. Rahasya Triasam being his magnum opus of uh, Rahasya Granthas are books dealing with the esoteric and the, the, the special meanings of the three. Uh, main mantras given uh, at Pancha Samskara or Samashrayanam, the Vai Sri Vaishnava Diksha the ceremony. And, uh, and also these smaller rahasyas also dealing with those. Uh, um, they are called Chilarai Rahasyango. They are the, the small, small, small books, which we're also going through. If you look on the YouTube channel, we have several of these, which we've already gone through. Samparaya Parishudhi, uh, Tattva Navaditam, um, Tattva Parichaya, I think. Anyway, there are, there are a few, there are a few that, we've, that we've gone through already and we're going to continue doing those. 
So if, if anybody wants to read those, they can, they can look at the, at the playlists in the YouTube channel. So these are written in uh, Manipavala language and they strengthen the theological and esoteric doctrines of Sri Vaishnavism. The Pancharatra Raksha was written by Vedanta Deshika in Sanskrit, vindicating the unquestionable validity of the Pancharatra arguments, which are very important to the practical worship of Lord Vishnu uh, in the Sri Vaishnava Sampadaya. Um, the Sacharita Raksha has uh, given a meaningful significance to the religious practice, practices of Vaishnavas. Nikshep, Nikshepa Raksha, a treatise on Sharnagati or property, surrender, the process of surrender as an empire, as a means to moksha, has uh, provided a strong defense for the practice of self-surrender to God as, as the sadhana for moksha, for the means to moksha, empire. So his commentary on Yamuna's Chatra Sloki and Stotra Ratna has upheld the theological concepts of the supremacy of Vishnu over other deities and that goddess Lakshmi is an integral part of the ultimate reality. Through his Dramido Upanishad Tatparya Ratnavali and his Dramido Upanishad Sara, Dramido Upanishad refers to the prayers of the Alvars in Tamil, which is considered a Dramida language or Dramida language. The hymns of Nama were secured a respectful place in the, in the philosophical realm. His allegorical drama, known as Sankalpa Surodaya, uh, the poetic works of Yav uh, Yadava Budaya and Hamsa Sandesha, uh, and several devotional lyrics, um, and Paduk Paduka, Paduka Sahasram, thousand verses on the sandals of Lord Ranganatha. Apart from exhibiting his poetic skill, are full of philosophical significance. So, just looking at the footnote here, uh, we can also find more details about this in BKSN Raghavan's History of Vishishtha Greater Literature, pages 33 to 39. Indeed, in the hands of Vedanta Deshika, Sri Vaishnavism, both in philosophy, theology, and religious discipline, as expounded by his spiritual master Ramanuja, not his direct spiritual master, of course, but he comes in the lineage from Ramanuja, um, got further strengthened and developed beyond anyone's imagination. In fact, the works which were contributed by his predecessors, who were immediate successors to Ramanuja, are almost, were almost eclipsed by his works. In the same way, the works which were written in the later period, barring those of Pillai Lokacharya, along with the commentaries of his successor, Manavala Muni. Uh, could not stand comparison with the brilliance, originality, and depth of scholarship of Vedanta Deshika. Most of them, as will be shown presently, were mere elaboration or commentaries on the works of the earlier Acharyas, or tracts on individual topics which had already been covered by Vedanta Deshika. This remarkable development of Vaishnavism through the scholarly works of Vedanta Deshika was further supplemented by the contribution of Pilar Acharya. 1264 to 1369 um, CE. So if we contrast, Vedanta Deshika was, I believe, 1269, uh, 1268, 1268 to 1369. And whereas we're talking about here, Pilar Lokacharya being 1264. So he was born for approximately four years before Vedanta Deshika. So he was a contemporary of Vedanta Deshika, and they both lived to 1369. 1369, is it mentioned here, Vedanta Deshika 1369? Yeah. So these are, these are common dates here. Although um, some of the, some dates may put uh, uh, Vedanta Deshika as outliving Hilalokacharya. Anyway, so he, he wrote a total of 18 works in Manipavala language, that's Hilalokacharya. Um, which are collectively called the Astadasha Rahasya. So Astadasha means 18, Rahasya means works on the secret mantras that are given in Shamasraya and Mokhanja Samskara. So Vedanta uh, Deshika wrote about these Rahasya, he had Rahasya uh, books that he wrote, and so did uh, Pillar Lakacharya. The major works which deal with the essentials of Vaishnavism are Tattva Trayam, Sri Vachanabhushanam, Artapanchikam, and Mumukshapadi. Probably we should say Tattva Triam comes first, 
then Mamukshapati, then Sri Ratsanabhusham. Uh, no, excuse me. Uh, Tattva Triam, Arta Panchigam, Mamukshapati, and Sri Ratsanabhusham in, in that order, pretty much. So, this, the, uh, his other works are relatively of minor character as they deal with the esoteric doctrines or rahasyas or secrets of Vaishnavism. So the footnote says we have to look at KKA Vintana Charis Sri Vaishnava Mani Pravala, page 124 to 141, for details about these works. KKA Vintana Chari is a very nice uh, uh, Sri Vaishnava scholar. Um, spent a lot of time in Mumbai at the uh, Anantachari Indological Research Institute in Mumbai, and uh, he also he also uh, spent some time. Um, doing research work up with the Swami Narayan uh, group in Gujarat who uh, say that they're an offshoot of the Sri Vaishnava Sampadaya. So some of Pilanakacharya's views differ from those of Vedanta on certain theological issues such as the ontological goddess of uh, the ontological status of the goddess Sri, or Lakshmi, the nature of property as a means to moksha, the operation of God's grace vis-a-vis -vis human endeavor, the concept of vatsalya, the, uh, the observance of vanashrama dharma by persons engaged in divine service. Besides, there are few other minor, minor doctrinal differences between the two acharyas, which seem to have erupted at an academic level involving the interpretation of certain basic concepts. Pillai Lopacharya was a senior contemporary, just by a few years, of Vedanta Deshika, and as two scholars, they were on friendly terms and bore no animosity to each other. At this stage, there was no split in the Sri Vaishnava community into the two sects of the northern and the southern schools, the Wadagalais and the Tengalais. We can also call them the country, the country Acharyas and the Sri Rangamacharyas. Uh, although the seeds of the, of the rift might have been sown at this time. So it became pronounced at a later period, long after the advent of Bhadavada Muni, Bhadavada Muni is popularly known as Manavala Mahamuni. So the split into two sects, each claiming an allegiance to a particular Acharya might have arisen much later, presumably in the 18th century, on account of the rivalry caused by the temple administration at Sri Rangam, which was at that time in the hands of the successors of Manavala Mahamuni. So the footnote says we should also see um, KKA Venkatacharya Sri Vaishnava Mani Pavala, um, pages 165 to 166. In terms of Vadagalai and Tengalai, the Kanchipuram Acharyas, the Northern Acharyas, and the, the Sri Rangam or the Southern Acharyas, literally meaning Northern culture and Southern culture, uh, uh, but they, they bear a different implication. The Vadagalais are those who lay greater emphasis on the Vedanta texts in Sanskrit and the Tengalais are those that uh, give more prominence to the hymns of the Alwars in Tamil. Actually, I would dispute this point that um, both, both the Wadagalais and the Tengalais um, praise both the Sanskrit and the Tamil, um, the Tamil hymns. Uh, but but there, is, there does tend to be um, more, more Sanskrit philosophical um, books written by Vedanta Deshika. At the same time, uh, we have uh, great reverence for the Nalai Divya Prabhanim and Tamil of the Alwars by both, by members of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya from both sects. So, however, in actual practice, the Vatagalais are those Vaishnavas who owe their allegiance to Vedanta Deshika, whereas Tengalais are those who trace their allegiance to Manavala Mahamuni. That's a better way to understand the difference between the two schools. The distinction between the two is based on the doctrinal differences on a few uh, theological issues, right? There are 18 points of difference, some of which are of major significance, while many are of minor importance. Now, there are, there are, many, there are many more actual differences or slight differences, but they're, they're, they're codified in, a, in, in slokas and things as being, of eight, as being 18. So uh, these have been outlined in a work in the 19th century called Astadasa Beda Vichar by Varavada Guru. So there was an Acharya who, who wrote a book on this and, and really tried to delineate these 18 doctrinal differences or theological differences between the two schools. 
We shall discuss in the concerned chapters the important doctrinal differences and to what extent they are philosophically justifiable. For the present, we may take note of the fact that at the religious level, Vaishnavism grew on two parallel lines in the latter centuries as a result of these sectarian differences. But at a philosophical level, however, Vishishtadreta Vedanta, as expounded by Ramanuja, has continued unaffected by these differences. Now we come to the development of Vaishnavism in the post Deshika period, or we can say even the post Pilalakacharya um, uh, time, because Deshika and Pilalakacharya were contemporaries. So in the post Deshika period, extending over six centuries, Sri Vaishnavism, has, uh, as it is popularly known, has developed on two parallel and systematic lines, one sect owing its allegiance to Vedanta Deshika and the other to Manavala Mahamuni. The Wadagalai sect has had a long line of succession of eminent acharyas. Two important matams or religious centers came into existence initially, one known as Ahobala Matam and the other is Parakala Matam. So the Ahobala Matam will have its headquarters in Ahobala, which is a holy place in, in uh, Andhra Pradesh, or uh, the Avatar Stala, or the appearance place of Narasimha, Avatar, the half man, half lion, Avatar Vishnu. And the other is the Parakalamat, who they tend to be worshippers of, of, of Lord Vishnu in the form of Hayagriva. And uh, their headquarters are in Mysore, in Karnataka state, uh, near to Bangalore. So both headed by eminent ascetics, sannyasis, right, for the propagation of Ramanuja Siddhanta as interpreted by Vedanta Deshika. Subsequently, in the 18th century, along uh, so in the 18th century, another center known as the Andavan Ashram, Andavan Ashram came into existence headed by aesthetics. And now today we can see that there are two Andavans. Uh, there are what we call Peri Andavan and Chin Andavan, or there's a great uh, bigger Andavan and a smaller Andavan. The smaller Andavan is called uh, Pondarika Puram Andavan, which is, has a headquarters in Sri Ranga. And then the other Andavan, Swami, um, you know, the, the, the late Andavan Swami of the other ashram is what's called Sri Mushna Mandavan to, to make, and he has a much bigger organization and has several schools in Sri Rangam in different places. So the important Acharyas uh, who have contributed scholars, now, he hasn't mentioned here so much, but he may mention it um, further on, but these are, these are all Matams that are aligned with uh, Vedanta Deshika and the, and the, nor the Kanchipuram Acharya is the northern school or what's called the Wadagalai Sampadaya, the Wadagalai sect of Sri Vaishnavism. There are also Matams which have to do with the uh, Tengalai school, like the, like the um, uh, Vana Marmalai Mat, of, which is headquartered down in Alwatir Nagari in Tirna Valley district down near the base of the, the, the bottom of India. Uh, the place of Namalwa. So that's a, a big Tengalai month. So there are, there are Tengalai months, there are Wadigalai months. There's also, um, okay, so then we have to say um, the important Acharyas who have contributed scholarly works are Kumara Vedanta Acharya, 1316 to 1401, the son of Vedanta Deshika, uh, the Brahma Tantra Parakalam Swami number one, uh, because this became a, a title of the Swamis or the, uh, the Jir Swamis, the head Swamis of the um, Parakalamat in Mysore. So the Brahma Tantra Swatantra Parakala Swami, number one, 1286 to 1386, the first pontiff of, of Parakala Matam, and some of his successors who were the pontiffs of the Parakala Matam. Uh, Adivan Sarakopa Yatindra Mahadeshikan, right, 1398 uh, CE, was the first pontiff of the Ahobala Matam. He was a brahmachari who, in a dream, um, Lord Narasimha came to him in a dream and said, please come to Ahobalam. And he came to Ahobalam where Narasimha came and gave him sannyas and, and gave him Yutsava Murti of Malola Narasimha, which is one of the nine Narasimhas in, in Ahobalam. So that... Uh, that Swami um, started the Ahobala Matam. And uh, 
and some of his successes, Mahacharya, 1509 to 1591, Tathacharya, 16th century, uh, Ranga Ramanuja Muni of the 16th century. Ranga Ramanuja Muni was a <coughs> Ranga Ramanuja Muni of the 16th century. I'm not sure if this is the same Ranga Ramanuja that we're talking about who, was, who made the commentaries on uh, Upanishads. Um, Srinivas Acharya of the 17th century. That could be the same Srinivas Acharya who wrote the Yeti Ramanuja Dika. Um, not, not quite sure about this. No, Nrsimha Raja of the 17th, 18th century, Paravastu Vedanta Acharya of the 18th century, Tata Deshika of the 18th century, Vedanta Ramanuja Swami, also known as Sakshat Swami. Um, it's not, not mentioned here, his date, but Gopala Deshika of the 18th century um, and many others. The books, written in San the books written in Sanskrit are mostly in the form of commentaries and glossaries on the works of Ramanuja and Vedanta Deshika. Some are devoted to a criticism of Advaita uh, doctrines. Some are intended to uphold the supremacy of Vishnu as against the criticism of Shaivites. Right? Shaivites and uh, Advaitins are not to be confused. Advaitins are smartest who believe in uh, all the worship of all different uh, forms of Saishwara or, or Sa. Uh, Saguna Ishwara, or God with forms, uh, but they ultimately believe in the impersonal form. Shaivites, on the other hand, are specifically worshippers of Shiva, and uh, they may or may not be Advaitins, in, ultimately in their philosophy, in their Vedanta philosophy. Some of them are not even so much, even worried so much about Vedanta, and they, they read other scriptures rather than read Vedanta. Some are devoted to the explanation of sacraments and certain daily rituals of the Sri Vaishnavas. So, so there's plenty of books coming from the from the these acharyas at this time, but these are basically the types of books that they wrote. Some of these acharyas, particularly Ranga Ramanuja Muni, Vedanta Ramanuja, and Periya, Periya Parakala Swami, the 21st pontiff of Parakala Matam, have written commentaries on the hymns of the Alwars. Right. So uh, we can also look at the book, uh, again mentioned by uh, VKSN Raghavan, History of Vishishtadva Literature, pages 52 to 68, for a fuller account of the literature that appeared in this period. There's also a PhD thesis which has been published um, about uh, Sri Vaishnavism post-Ramanuja in South India, which is also very good on this, on this topic. So the other school of thought, headed by Manavala Mamuni, the Tengalais or the Southern Acharyas, or, or otherwise called the Sri Rangam Acharyas, uh, has carried on the propagation of Sri Vaishnavism through a line of successive Tengalai Acharyas. Manavala Mamuni, also known as Bharavada Muni, was born in uh, 1370 CE and lived up to 1443 CE. He has commented extensively on the important Manipravala works of Pilalokacharya such as Momokshipati and uh, Sri Vachanabhushana, like that. So he also wrote uh, commentaries on the works of other Acharyas, one on the hymns of Periyalwar, the uh, foster father of, of Andal, uh, and three important works in Tamil, such as Upadesha Ratnamalai, uh, Tiruvai Moli Nutrandari, and Arti Prapandam. Uh, his only work in Sanskrit is called Yati Raj Vimsati, which is 20 verses on Ramanuja, laudatory 20 verses on Ramanuja. He had uh, a line of successors who spread his teachers all over the country. In fact, Manavala Mamuni had eight main disciples who he named, who were named as the Astadig Gajas, the eight directional elephants. Sometimes when you see a, a, uh, a picture of a um, a diagram of, of Vedic cosmology or Puranic cosmology, you see that the universe is held up by different things and there are these eight elephants in the eight directions that hold up the planetary system. So these, these, uh, these great eight Acharyas who were disciples of Manavala Mahamuni and spread his teachings all, all over India, they were called the Astadig Gajas. So uh, his only, uh, okay, so then their works are mostly in Manipavalam language and are devoted to an exposition of the esoteric doctrines of Sri Vaishnavism and the hymns of the Alwas. The followers of Manavala Mahamuni are generally given greater importance, have generally given greater importance to the teachings of the Alwas. 
So as in the school, uh, as in the school of Wadigalai, the Tengalai school of thought, too, had set up matams or religious centers headed by one, uh, an aesthetic, one aesthetic, sannyasi, to propagate Vaishnavism. The chief matams, the Tengala of the Tengalai school, are the Vana Marmalai matam, near Nanguneri, near Tirunavelli in southern India, which I just mentioned, whose pontiff is called Vana Marmalai Jia. The word Jia means the sannyasi head of a, of a matam. Tirumalai Jia matam at Tirupati, because Tirumalai means Tirumala, means the the Sri, the holy mountain, right? One at Sri Rangam, known as Sri Ranganarayana Jiyamattam, which is in the, uh, which is situated in North Uttara Street in Sri Rangam, just outside the northern uh, entrance to the Sri Rangam temple. And that basically is, is considered to be the temple Jiyar, the sannyasi of the temple. And uh, so his, his matam is right near to Ranganayaki Sanadi, the Sanadi of the, of the consort of Lord Ranganatha, Ranganayaki, Sri Devi's uh, uh, temple, which is right in the back of the Sri Rangan temple. So that is the Sri Ranganarayana Jiyo matam. And the Yati Raja matam in Melkuti, in Melkuti in Karnataka, which is near to Mysore, right? There's a, there's a matam called Yati Raja matam. So all these matams have served for centuries as important religious centers for the study of Vaishnava philosophy and propagation of Vaishnava religion. Development of other schools of Vaishnavism. So now we're going to talk a little bit about other schools of Vaishnavism that, that came after uh, the Sri Vaishnava school or also concurrent with some of the later developments of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. So the historical account of Vaishnavism would be incomplete if we do not take into consideration the spread of Vaishnava movements in different ways in other parts of India. Though it is somewhat out of the scope of this book, a brief mention of the later schools of Vaishnavism is called for only to emphasize the vitality and universality of Vaishnavism as a living religion of great antiquity. Ramanuja was the original exponent of Vaishnavism both as a school of philosophy and the theological system. We have already noted how it developed under his guidance and was followed up by his devout followers through the centuries. So in the post Ramanuja period, besides Sri Vaishnava as, as it was practiced today, as it is practiced today by the followers of Vedanta Deshika and Manavala Mahamuni, we had several other schools of thought developed in the West, the Western, northern and eastern parts of India by eminent acharyas and religious reformers such as Madhva, otherwise known as Madhva Acharya, right? Um, Nimbarka, Ramananda, Balabacharya, and Sri Krishna Chaitanya in Janeshwara. Madhva Acharya was born in 1238 CE, uh, nearly 200 years later than Ramanuja, uh, was an exp exponent of the Dwaita school of Vedanta, Dwaita meaning dualism. Though his dualistic system of Vedanta is different from that of Ramanuja, he was a strong upholder of Vaishnava theism. His teachings on Vaishnavism mark an important epoch in the history of Vaishnavism. Whether or not he was directly influenced by Ramanuja, he has undoubtedly developed the bhakti or the devotional movement initiated by Ramanuja and further strengthened Vaishnavism by asserting that Vishnu is the very Brahman and bhakti or supreme devotion to the Lord is the means to moksha, the liberation. He traveled all over India and spread Vaishnavism. His literary contribution to Vaishnavism is significant. So I don't think he's going to go exactly into that here, but uh, Ramanuja uh, 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 Madhva wrote about 38 philosophical books called um, uh, um, what's, what's it called? Prama, um, Pramaya, hmm. it's, uh, I can't think of it off, offhand, but he wrote about 38 or 39 books. And, uh, you know, we can go into them some other time if, if people are interested. He wrote an independent work known as Vishnu Tattva Vinirnaya, or, or it's called here Vishnu Tattva Nirnaya, uh, to establish the supremacy of Lord Vishnu. He's also written another book entitled Tantra Sa Sangraha, which deals with practical aspects of worshipping Vishnu. Right. He, he also wrote another book, Sadachar Shmiti, which is more or less an, like the Nitya Grantra of Ramanuja. It's about daily worship, the daily activities. Uh, he accorded greater authority to the Bhagavad to the Bhagavad Purana, 
and wrote a commentary on it. Uh, although his Bhagavad Purana may be slightly different, have slightly different content than the the North in the the, the the other Bhagavad Purana, which is commentated on by um, Gauri Vaishnavas and uh, Balabha Vaishnavas and Nimbaka Vaishnavas, etc. So he accorded greater authority to the Bhagavad Purana, whereas the Sri Vaishnavas had accorded greater greater authority to the Vishnu Purana. Um, Madhva holds in great esteem the Pancharatra Agamas. So Madhva also follows the Pancharatra Agamas, and you can see that is in the book Tantrasa Sangraha, the influence of Pancharatra Agamas. The Bhakti movement initiated by Madhva was carried uh, on further and spread all over the country by his able disciples Jayatirtha and Vyasarai. Um, the latter promoted the devotional movement known as the Dasakuta. Dasakuta. So sometimes people, sometimes mothers talk about two sections of their Sampadaya, the Dasakuta and the Vyasakuta. The Vyasakuta people are more interested in reading Vedanta and studying that. And the Dasakutas are, are more interested in singing the names of God and, uh, and that sort of devotional uh, activities. So the latter promoted the devotional movement known as Dasakuta, comprising a, ba a band of saintly persons singing devotional songs, notably... Uh, notable among these is our Purandra Das and Kanaka Das. There are these uh, Dasas of Karnataka, uh, also Jagannath Das. There are these other Dasas, and so some of them were Sudras, some of them were not Sudras. Um, but they sang Purandra Das is considered to be an incarnation of Narada uh, Muni, Narada Rishi, and he is or, or, he's also um, said, to have, uh, said to have made you know, 100,000 bhajans, but we don't have, of course, that many bhajans today, but there are, there are many, many of these bhajans and songs and devotional songs by Purandra Das and Kanaka Das, which are still very popular today, but whose songs are greatly popular, have greatly popularized the bhakti cult, of the cult of devotion to Lord Vishnu. So basically, the Vaishnavism of Madhva is not very different from that of Ramanuja, though there are some doctrinal differences in respect to, to certain theological details. However, Madhva's Vaishnavism, Madhva's Vaishnava theism had far-reaching influence on Chaitanya and the Maharashtran saints. So Chaitanya was, of course, a Bengali saint, and uh, the Maharashtran saints like Janeshwar, I mean, there, are some, there are some others, Ekanath. Uh, Ramananda, Ramananda, 1300 to 1411, another important religious reform of northern, in, northern India, <clears throat> was deeply influenced by the teachings of Ramanuja and spread the universal gospel of bhakti. And the, one of the, uh, the great things about Ramananda was that he was, he was a very big social reformer, uh, as many of the Swaishnavacharyas were, and he completely, um, completely spoke about in his, in his sect, he completely rejected the idea of, 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 um, of, of classifying people in, by their caste, by their, by their birth caste. So casteism was, was thrown out of uh, Ramananda Vaishnavism. And also, he specifically was a worshipper of Lord Rama, Sita Rama. Rama. So um, he regarded Rama, one of the incarnations of Vishnu, as Brahman, as the supreme Brahman. Though through his 12 uh, devoted disciples, he preached the religion in the mother tongue of the people, which was a form of Hindi. And so we have, uh, you know, the northern Indian um, Hindi belt of India, uh, where there's a lot of uh, followers of Ramananda. Since he did not believe in the caste system and accepted the concept of universal brotherhood, he was able to appeal to all the classes of people and establish faith in monotheism, in Vaishnava monotheism, and the bhakti cult, the devotional cult of, 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 of bhakti yoga. Um, Kabir, born in 1338, was one of his greatest disciples. Kabir was was like um, is 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 um, honored by the Muslim community and also by the Hindu community in India. Tulsi Dasa, 1532, uh, another important follower of the Ram of Ramananda, spread Vaishnavism through his classic epic in Hindi language, uh, known as Sri Ram Charit Manas, which is basically a Hindi version of the Sanskrit uh, Valmiki Ramayana. So. Nimbarka, a Telugu Brahmin who lived in the latter part of the 12th century AD after Ramanuja, was the founder of Dwaita Dwaita Vedanta, right? 
He developed the Vaishnava cult under the, under the name of Sanat Kumar Narada Sampradaya, which is similar in several respects to that of Ramanuja. He maintains that Brahman is Radha Krishna, possessing the six principal attributes, right, that we talked about, uh, Jnana, Aishwarya, Bala, Kriya, uh, uh, Jnana, Shakti, um, Aishwarya, um, and many other auspicious qualities. He was also influenced by the Pancharatra, although he did not advocate temple worship. The thing about um, Nimbarka is the Nimbarka and Balabas, um, and even the Gaudis to a certain extent, they, they tend to worship Radha or Radha Krishna, Krishna or Radha Krishna, and worship them in more of a palace type setting or a house type setting, which they call a Haveli rather than a temple, uh, a Mandir. So he has accepted property as a means of moksha. So in, in, uh, in, in Bhagavad Sampradaya, they've, they've also taken this idea of property or self-surrender as the means to moksha. He had a large number of followers who spread the Radha Krishna cult, which is a type of Vaishnavism. Now, Balabacharya, the founder of Shuddhadvaita Vedanta, who was born in 1478 AD, was the son of a Telugu Brahmin in Raipur, Madhya Pradesh, advocated yet another type of Vaishnavism. According to his, this school, the, the Bhagavan of the Bhagavad Purana, or Lord Krishna, is the highest Brahman. Superpersonal Purushottama with a divine body or, or Vigraha. Um, uh, Purushottama is also the name given by Nimbarka to the Supreme uh, the Supreme Godhead. So here we see he's saying Balabacharya also uses this word Purushottama to mean Lord Krishna. Um, uh, so so the so super personal um, Purushottama with a divine body, Vigraha, uh, made of bliss, Ananda. Uh, he has also advanced the path of bhakti or devotion as the only way of attaining divine bliss. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, born in 1486 CE in Navadvip, uh, West Bengal, founded the Bengali school, the Bengal school of Vaishnavism, or popularly known as Chaitanya Vaishnavism. He was intoxicated with love of Krishna, Krishna Prema, and spread the gospel of devotion to Lord Krishna throughout the country. So he even went to South India himself to preach, and he sent his disciples to uh, Central India and also Eastern India to preach his message. Bhagavan as Krishna is accepted uh, as the absolute Parabrahman and not an avatar. The concept of Radha Krishna incarnate in Chaitanya brings out the full import of Krishna Lila, according to Gaudiya Vaishnavism or Bengali Vaishnavism, Chaitanya Vaishnavism. He also believes that bhakti or devotion, understood in the sense of loving service to God, is the only means of attaining the bliss of Krishna. There are gradations in bhakti, but the concept of erotic love between Radha Krishna or Prema Bhakti finds an important place. Jayadev Goswami, or Jayadev, one of, the, one of his followers, uh, who actually preceded him, preceded him by one or two hundred years, has immortalized this concept in his lyrical poem, the Git, called Gita Govinda. It captured the imagination of the people so greatly that the bhakti movement based on Radha Krishna cult spread quickly in the eastern part of India. So that was in, in the central part, in Vrindavan area around Mathura, Vrindavan, which is just south of Delhi. Also, uh, the three centers, the, so that's one center, another center in Bengal, another center in uh, Orissa uh, at, at Puri Jagannath. So he was um, uh, uh, one other important Vaishnava movement, which took its root in Assam, which is in eastern India, um, beyond Bengal, uh, has, uh, was headed by Shankara Dev, born 1449 CE. He ha was greatly influenced by the philosophy of Ramanuja. He traveled widely all over the country and spread Vaishnavism, which may be called Assam Vaishnavism or Neo Vaishnavism even throughout the country. Even you can go to Vrindavan and you can see some of these Assamese, Assamese Manipur, Tripura um, temples of this type of Vaishnavism. Um, following the teaching of the Bhagavad Purana or the, the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, he emphasized the bhakti movement or devotional movement and preached a religion and philosophy similar to that of Ramanuja. Janeshwara, 1271 to 1293, is the founder of the bhakti school in Maharashtra, which is Western India. Um, Lord Vishnu is worshipped as Vitoba or Vittala. 
So this is, uh, for if you want to uh, understand this, the word Vishnu became BT in Kannada, in Bitala, in Maharashtra, right? The deity in Pandurapur temple is worshipped as Pandaranga Bittala, Pandaranga Bittala. So he advocated, uh, and, and he's, he has his consort, he's Krishna, and he has his consort Rukmini. So when Krishna, his main queen in Dwarka was Ruk, Rukmini. So uh, the deities of Rukmini and Vitala are in the temple in uh, Pandrapur. He, uh, Pandrapur is also known as a Bhajan Chetra. So there's a, a very famous type of Kirtan, which is done in Pandrapur, or by the people who follow, um, by the people who follow this type of Bhakti. He advocated bhakti or devotion to God as the only means of realizing God. Following the teaching of the Bhagavata, the Bhagavad Purana, again, he, again, he emphasized the nine forms of bhakti, each having its own efficacy in securing salvation. So there are nine forms of bhakti which are mentioned in the Bhagavata. Um, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Parasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasim, Sakyam, Advani, Vedanam. The, the, the great devotee Prahlad has, uh, has enunciated these nine types of bhakti in the Bhagavata. So here it's just saying that Ganeshwar was um, explaining that each one of these can be used as a means to realize God or to attain, the, um, you know, attain moksha, liberation. So his teachings caught the attention of a... Um, uh, of uh, a large number of devotees in Maharashtra. There appeared several mystics and bhaktas of God, such as Namadev, Ekana, Tukaram, and Ramdas uh, in, in that area, in Maharashtra. Namadev, 1270 to 1350, born in a tailor's family, became an ardent devotee of Lord Pandarinatha, and his devotional outpourings to this Lord are embodied in his abangas, which are his uh, devotional lyrics, right? Um, which have moved the hearts of devotees all over Maharashtra. Ekanath, 1533 to 1598 CE, dedicated himself to the service of God by singing Sankirtans. Sankirtans are devotional songs in Marathi language, uh, which is the native language of Maharashtra. Tukaram, 1607 to 1649 CE, the son of a farmer near Pune. Pune is just um, west of Mumbai, or Bombay. Not west, east. East, east, west would be in the ocean. Okay, east of Mumbai, uh, Pune advocated the service to God as more important than salvation. So this is also seen in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, and many, many Vaishnavas, they they, they're, they're more interested in actual service to God, service to the Lord, to Lord Truman Raya, to Lord Vishnu, to Krishna, right, than actual liberation, right? So whether there's service here or service in, in God's heaven, then it, it doesn't, you know, it's service which is most important for the Vaishnavas. So Ramdas, 1608 to 1681 CE, was an ardent devotee of Rama, and emphasized the performance of duty with the heart set on God. Among the recent Vaishnava, among recent Vaishnava development, we must take note of the Krishna consciousness movement in the different parts of the world founded by Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who was a follower of the Chaitanya school of Vaishnavism. This modern movement has captured the attention of a large number of people in the United States of America and other parts of the world. They believe in the worship of Radha Krishna as a supreme being. The worship takes the form of kirtan or chanting the name of Hare Krishna. Uh, it has become so popular that one can witness large numbers of ardent devotees participating in it all over the world. The followers of this cult have adopted the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavad Purana as, their, as the two, mo as two important religious texts. They follow daily religious observances on the pattern of Chaitanya Vaishnavites of Assam and Bengal. As devotees of Lord Krishna, they are Vaishnavas. Their missionary zeal has taken Vaishnavism to many parts of the world. Thus, it may be observed that Vaishnavism as a living monotheistic religion is very ancient going back to Rig Vedic times. It has developed itself and grown steadily through the several centuries right through to the present day. Though it has assumed different forms in different periods, it's basically the same religion as it believes in the exclusive worship of Vishnu 
or any one of his manifestations such as Rama, Krishna, Govinda, and Pandaranga. Bhakti or devotion plays an important role as a means of salvation. There may be differences in the external forms and observance of certain daily rituals, including mode of worship, to suit the conditions of different regions, but the basic tenets of Vaishnavism have remained unchanged. The vitality of this religion lies in its universal appeal in terms of reciprocal love of God and God's love to the bhaktas, to the devotees, and thus promoting the uni uni promoting of universal brotherhood. Now, the source books for Vaishnavism. Okay, so we'll just, in summary, we'll go over the source books of, of Vaishnavism. Before we go into a discussion of the philosophical and theological doctrines of Vaishnavism, we may note the source books for our study of this subject. So he's condensed it all down, and he's obviously you have to go to these sources if you really want to know the subject. Uh, a religion which has grown over a period of many centuries has, to its credit, a very extensive literature. We may, however, record the important source material for the benefit of research scholars and also to indicate the authoritative original sources from which the present book is written. The following are important source material. Number one, the Vedas. Uh, one, the Rig, Veda, the Rig Veda Samhitas. In particular, the hymns referring to Vishnu, the Vishnu Suktas, Purusha Sukta, which is Rig Veda 1090, uh, the Sri Sukta, which is coming in as a kila or an appendix section to the Rig Veda, along with the commentaries by great Vaishnavacharyas on these texts. Number two, the Taittiriya Samhita. Number three, the Satapata Brahmana, right? Number three, the Taittiriya Ranyaka. Uh, four, excuse me, the Taittiriya Ranyaka. Number two, uh, so those are the Shruti texts, the Vedic texts. And then we have other Shruti texts called the Upanishads. So we dealt with the Samhitas, the Aranyakas, and the Brahmanas. And now we have uh, um, most important for Vaishnavism, the Upanishads, the following Upanishads out of 200 or, or, the, or the, the general normal list is about of 108 uh, Upanishads, but here are the important ones for Vaishnavas. Isha, Kena, Kata, Prashna, Mundaka, Taittiriya, Brihad, Aranyaka, Chandogya, Mahanarayaniya, Swedishvatara, Atarvashika, Subala, Narayana, Narasimha Tapani Upanishad, and, and Maha, Maha Upanishad. We can also add to those Gopal Tapani Upanishad and um, Rama Tapani Upanishad. There are some other Vaishnava Upanishads. If you look, uh, if you get the, um, the series, you can look on archive.org and you can find the series printed by Adyar, the Adyar Library series, and they print a special series called Vaishnava Upanishads. So th these are most important for Vaishnavas. Uh, but also here, we've mentioned some of the earlier Upanishads, some of the more important philosophical Upanishads also. So thirdly, Itihasas. Itihasas are called epics. So we have two Iti houses, basically. First one is Ramayana. The Ramayana is the story of Sita Ram in, uh, by Valmiki Rishi and uh, in 24,000 Sanskrit verses. And the uh, Mahabharata, which is more than 100,000 verses by, by Veda Vyasa, is the story about Lord Krishna and the five Pandava brothers. Um, and in particular, the Shanti Parva, the uh, different sections of the Mahabharata are called Parvas. So particularly the Shanti Parva, the Narayaniya section, the Moksha and the Moksha Dharma section, the Bhishma Parva, which includes the section which is, includes the Bhagavad Gita, right? The Anushasana Parva, the Vishnu Sahasranam section. So in that in that particular Parva where Bhishma Dev speaks the thousand names of Vishnu, and the Ashramedika Parva, which includes the Anugita section. So the fourth uh, four, fourth uh, fourth group here of, uh, of, of source texts should be the Vaishnava Puranas. So here we have, uh, he's given seven, but I would say that there are, that there are usually um, uh, six main, six main uh, Sattvic Puranas. So here he's given seven. Uh, Vishnu Purana, Narada Purana, Vish Vishnu Dhamotra Purana, Pabba Purana, Raha Purana, Garuda Purana, and Bhagavata Purana. And these are not, of course, in, their, in, their, um, in the order of them being important. For Sri Vaishnavas, the Va Vishnu Purana would be the most important. But for many other Vaishnavas, the Bhagavad Purana would be the most important of the Puranas um, for them. 
So now uh, the next section is agamas. So we have different agamas, as we discussed in our other course on uh, agamas in South Indian Vaishnavism, which you can also find on this YouTube channel, uh, uh, and the agamas in South Indian Vaishnavism playlist. Right, we've discussed the Vaikanasa and the Pancharatragamas, which are two parallel agamas, which are both meant for the worship of Lord Vishnu. So here we have uh, Vaikanasa Samhitas and Pancharatra Samhitas. The Vaikanasa Samhitas, which are most important to Vaishnavism, are the Vimana Arjuna Kalpa of Marichi, otherwise called Marichi Samhita, the, the Samudarchana Adhikarana of Atri, otherwise called Atri Samhita, the Gyanakanda of Kashyapa, because and the Kriya Kriyadikara of Brigu. Right. So remember that there are four subject matters in in, in, in Agamas. Uh, they are jnana, uh, jnana, yoga, kriya, and charya. Charya, uh, kriya and charya. Yeah. So these in that order. So these are the four sections. If you want more information on what those sections mean, what those different mean in the different agamas, both Vaishnava Agamas and non-Vaishnava Agamas, then please have a look at the other playlist, Agamas and Sri Vaik and uh, and South Indian Vaishnavism. So they're, they're Vaikanasa Samhitas, which are most important. And as for the Pancharatra Samhitas, we have the following, which are most important. Sattvata Poshkara and Jayakya, which are considered to be uh, considered to be the Ratan Triya, the three gems of the Pancharatra. Parameshwara, Padma and Ishra, which are the commentaries of those three gems. Parama Samhita, Lakshmi Tantra, Ahubhadnya Samhita, which are also considered uh, Vishwaksena Samhita and Naradiya Samhita. So these are all uh, very important Pancharatra Agamas. So it is. Now, sixthly, we can uh, we can understand that the four thousand Nalaya Divya Prabandham, the four thousand hymns in Tamil of the Alwars, the twelve Alwars, and the commentaries on the on the Tiruvai Moli and perhaps commentaries on some some of the other sections of the Nalaya Divya Prabandham. Uh, and here are, here so the Nalaya Divya, the four thousand hymns themselves are very important. And here are the principal commentaries. The first one is the uh, Arayira, uh, Arayira Padi of Pilan. So Pilan wrote uh, 6,000, right? Uh, uh, Arayira Padi means 6,000 verses, right? A commentary on the 4,000 verses of the, of the Alwas. Uh, Om Patiyayira Padi, which means the 9,000 of Nanjir. Uh, Ranga Ramanuja's Om Patiyayira Padi in Sanskrit, also 9,000 verses in Sanskrit. Commentary, the Alagiya, uh, it's called Alagiya, here it's written Alagiya, but Alagiya means a beautiful, Alagiya Manavala means beautiful bridegroom, Alagiya Manavala Jir is a sannyasi, name of a sannyasi, Panir Ayer, Panir Ayer Rapadi, um, and my Tamil fails me here as to what Panir Ayer Rapadi means, but it's also a number of verses. Periyavacha, Periya, Periya Parakala Swamis, Padi Ninnayira, Padi Ninnayira, Padi, Periyavacha and Pillai's Irutpatunalayira, Padi, Varakatiravidi Pillai's Idu, which is also called the, which is the full name of the Idu. Or you can just call it Idu, but the full name of, of the Idu is the Mupatiyaira Padi, which means the uh, the 36,000 36, verses. And then we have Vedanta Ramanuja, Vedanta Ramanuja's Irupatta, Irupatta Nalayira Padi. Okay. So then we have Yamunacharya's works. Yamunacharya's works were basically these four, Siddhi Triya, which is uh, Ishvara Siddhi, Sambit Siddhi, and, um, and Ishvara Siddhi, Sambit Siddhi, and Tata Siddhi, I'm not sure, but there's three cities which are together called Siddhi Triya. Okay, then we have Aga Pramanya, which is his book, um, um, supporting the Pancharatra, the authoritativeness of the Pancharatra arguments, right? Stotra Ratna and Chatur Sloki. For those of you who are interested in Stotra Ratna, we have a, a we have a, a playlist on the YouTube channel um, with Dr. Tiran Ryan explaining uh, Stotra Ratna, the 65 verses on the on the glories of Lord Sriman Narayana, 
by uh, Alavanda Yamunacharya with a commentary by Perivachan Pillai, uh, all, all 65 verses, and then Chatra Sloki, which is four, four verses on the goddess Lakshmi. Uh, we don't have that uh, on the YouTube channel yet, but probably we'll put that up sometime. And then the Gita Sangraha, which is 32 verses, giving the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. Now, uh, then, then after, um, after uh, Yamunacharya or Alavanda, we have Ramanuja's works. So Ramanuja had nine works, right, which are mentioned here as Sribhasya, which is his magnum opus on, on, the, on the Brahma Sutras, on the Vedanta Sutras, his commentary on the Vedanta Sutras, Vishishta Greater commentary on the Vedanta Sutras. And it also has a commentary on it by Sudarshan of Suri called Shruta Prakashika. Uh, Vedanta Deepa and Vedanta Sara, which is put on one line here, which are also sub they're, they're smaller commentaries. Vedanta Deepa is a slightly smaller commentary than Sri Basha. Vedanta Sara is a, a very condensed commentary on Sri Basha uh, or on Vedanta Sutras, right? Then we have Bhagavad Gita Basa commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. Vedanta Sangraha, which is about the Upanishads, uh, an explanation of the supremacy of Vishnu in the Upanishads and major themes in the Upanishads. Uh, the Gajitraya, which is normally listed as three works, but here is listed as one work. There are three Gajas or prose works by Ramanuja, which are Sharanagati Gajra Sri Ranga Gajra and Vaikuntha Gajra, about Sharanagati or property or surrender to God as a means to liberation. Uh, Sri Rangam, about the glories of Lord Ranganatha and Goddess Ranganayaki and the temple in Sri Rangam. And, uh, and Vaikuntha, all about the glories of the Supreme Paramapada, of the Supreme uh, Destination of, uh, for Moksha, or the, the Lord Vishnu's heaven, called Vaikuntha. Uh, so these are the three judges. And then we have the Nitya Grantha. Nitya Grantha, which again is a, is a book, a simple book of, uh, for the followers of Ramanuja to follow daily practices and how to worship the Lord and how to observe the fivefold Vaishnava day of Abhigamana, uh, sorry, um, Abhigamana, Upadana, Ija, Swadhyaya, and Yoga, divided up into these five sections, the day of the Vaishnava, where he worships the Lord in different ways. So then after that, we have Srivat Sankha Mishra, right? Srivat Sankha Mishra, also known as Kuresha, right? Who wrote uh, what we call Panchastavas, Panchastavas or five, five, um, Stotras in uh, in Sanskrit, which have which are highly philosophical, and so they are called Ati Manusha Stava, Sri Stava, Vardaraja Stava, and you can see what they're about. Sri Stava is obviously about Goddess Lakshmi. Vardaraja Stava is about the Lord in Kanchipuram. Vaikuntha Stava about Vaikuntha. Sundara Bahu Stava and Ati Manusha Stava are about particular deities of the Lord of Lord Sri Narayana. Sundara Bahu means one who has beautiful arms. Ati Manusha Stava means the greatest, the, the supreme person, like, like we say, Purushottama. So, um, okay, so then we have uh, Parasara Bhatta, and these are, we'll notice that these, these uh, the works of these Acharyas come in a different lineage. So in the lineage after, uh, the, uh, after the first Acharya, Nata Muni, we have, we have the, uh, the image, we have Yamunacharya, and then we have Ramanuja after, coming after him, Trivatsanka Mishra, or Kuresha coming after Ramanuja, and Parashara Bhatta coming after, after him, who, because he was one of the sons, the two sons of uh, Kuresha was Parashara Bhatta. And, uh, and, and, uh, and then, then and so, so Parashara Bhatta, right, uh, one of the sons of Kuresha or Sri Vatanka Vishra, um, the other son being Veda Vyasa Bhatta, so Parashara Bhatta, which, and Parashara Bhatta is normally just called Bhatta, right? And we understand if we say Bhatta, we mean Parashara Bhatta. Bhagavad Guna Darpana, which is his commentary on the Vishnu Sasranam of Thousand Names of Vishnu. Ashta Sloki, which is eight slokas. Sri Guna Ratna Kosha, about the, the qualities of Goddess Lakshmi. Sri Rangaraja Stava, which is about Lord Ranganatha. And, uh, and, and then we have his disciple, Nanjir, who was a sannyasin. Uh, Parashara Bhatta was not a sannyasin. Uh, and Sri... Sri Shukta Basya, so he wrote a commentary on the, on the Sri Shukta, which again is a Vedic hymn which comes from the Rig Veda, from the Kila section or the appendix section of the Rig Veda. Uh, then we have uh, Vangi Vam, Vamsheshvara, who wrote Vang, Vangishvara Karika, right, also known as 
Hanika Karika, which is another book, like uh, Prasarabhata also wrote a small book. Um, I'm not sure what the name of it was, but on just like Ramanuja's Nitya Granta on the daily activities of Vaishnavas. So this um, Vangi Vameshwar, uh, uh, Vameshwara uh, wrote his book on Anikam, which means the daily activities of Vaishnava. Both of these is, are available also in translation now. Um, then Atreya Ramanuja, Atreya Ramanuja um, wrote a Nyaya Kulisha, Vatsavardacharya, who wrote Tattvasara, Tattva Nirnaya, and Prapada Parijata, and Pramiya, uh, Pramiya, uh, Pramiya Mala. Uh, Vatsavardacharya's other name was Nadadur Ammal. Uh, so then we have Perivachan Pillai, his commentary is on Jutante Stotra. Jutante Stotra, Stotra is coming from the, uh, it's said to be a Vedic text, um, and we've covered that sub subject in other ones in South Indian Vaishnavism. It, it, uh, I think it has approximately 160 or 168 um, verses, but the first verse is very, very important. So there's the Jitante Stotra containing 168 verses, but we have the Jitante Sloka, which is the very first verse. Jitante Kundari Gacha Namaste Vishri Ravana Namaste Spurushi Kesha Mahapurusha Puravaja, which is chanted by all Pancharachans when they enter the temple and pay, and pay obeisance to the Lord at the Gwajastamba. Uh, Ramanuja's Gajatraya, so he wrote commentaries. Perivach and Pillai wrote commentaries on Tante Stotra, Ramanuja's Gajatraya, uh, the Chaja Sloki, which, are, which is by Yamunacharya, pa, Paranda Rahasyam, um, Tani Slokam, uh, Manika Malai. These are, these are books, I believe. Tani Slokam, I think, is by, um, by Pillai Lokacharya, but I could be wrong. And, and these other ones also, maybe. So uh, then Pillai Lokacharya, who come, is coming after Perivachan Pillai, wrote Sri Vachana Bhushanam, Tattva Triam, Arta Panchigam, Mumukshapati, and other minor Rahasya Granthas, along with the commentaries uh, of, uh, of Manavala Mahamuni uh, uh, thereupon. And, uh, and, uh, and then we have Vedanta Deshika's books. Uh, which are listed here, but, but only in brief because he wrote over 100 books. So we have Tattva Mukta Kalapa, which we've mentioned. It's the philosophical books I mentioned first, with Sarvata Siddhi, which is uh, Venandeshi's own commentary on Tattva Mukta Kalapa. Nyaya, Nyaya Panish, Panishudi, Nyaya Siddhanjana, Adhikarana Sharavali, uh, Pancharacha Raksha, which is again in a uh, defense of the Pancharacha system. Uh, Nikshep Raksha, which has to do with uh, which has to do with the property, and Sacharita Raksha, Tatpariya Chandrika, which is commentary on Ramanuja's Gita Basya, um, commentaries on the Gadya Triam of Ramanuja, the Stotra Ratna of Yamunacharya, and the Chava Sloki, right, which we can uh, which we should go through sometime, but we don't we didn't have a, a copy of the a commentary by Vedanta Deshika on Stokra Ratna when we started our Stokra Ratna class. So maybe perhaps sometime in the future we can do that. Isa Vasya Upanishad, which is available in translation, the commentary by Vedanta Deshika into English. Dramida Upanishad Sara, Dramida Upanishad Tatpariya Ratnavali. Uh, Rahasya Triya Sara, which is his magnum opus of his Rahasya Grantas and other Rahasya Grantas called Chilae Rahasyangal in Manipavala. And then we have, of course, we have Sankalpa Surodaya and we have um, Hamsa Sandesh and um, uh, one other book, you know, uh, some, some plays that he wrote and all the stotras that he wrote. Uh, during the seven centuries following Vedanta Desha and Pila Lakacharya, several works both in Sanskrit and Manipavala language have been written by Vaishnava Acharyas and eminent Vaishnava scholars belonging to both Wadagalai and Tengalai sects. As observed earlier, most of these books are in the form of further commentaries, glossaries on the hymns of the Alwars and works of Ramanuja, Vedanta Deshika, and other earlier Acharyas. The independent treaties, right, which have come up in this period are generally in the form of tracts to elucidate, elucidate the esoteric doctrines, right, mostly connected with the Diksha mantras, the mantras that you receive at, at uh, Samashrayana or Prapati, Panja Samskara. Um, since these works cannot be strictly considered as original contributions, um, they, I don't know why, they have, they have not been mentioned here um, because they're mainly commentaries, right? Whether, whether they are used, references have been indicated in the footnotes and in the bibliography. The literature 
on Vaishnavism is very extensive and exhaustive study of all this literature would run into many volumes. It is not the purpose of this book to present the history of Vaishnavism. Its scope, as explained in the introduction, is confined to, pres to present the fundamental philosophical and theological doctrines of Vaishnavism as propounded by Ramanuja and his followers on the basis of authentic original source books. So, uh, we now come to the end of the sec this section on historical development of Vaishnavism. The next section is entitled Part 2, The Philosophy of Vaishnavism, in which we'll deal with the, the philosophical and theological aspects of Vaishnavism in general, uh, Sri Vaishnavism in particular, and also some of the other Vaishnava cults. But for a more detailed treatment of some of the, the other Vaishnava sampradayas, we have to go into some other, another book which we can do in the Philosophical Systems, also written by uh, Dr. S.M.S. Chari. Mm -hmm.